Lord, you love us with an everlasting love. Let us live in your sanctuary. Let us find safety in you. You have heard our praises, O God. We sing our praises to you. You are the Lord of our love. Let's bow in prayer. Holy and eternal God, we praise your name. You love us with an everlasting love, and you embrace us. Lord, we rejoice because you forgive our sins. You restore us. You redeem us. You ransom us. Bless us, O Lord, with a new vision of who we are and who we are meant to be and to become. Bless us, O Lord, as you equip us and you energize us for all our challenges. Because you are with us throughout all the perils and the pitfalls of this life, and you lead us to the pleasant pathways and the glorious places of your divine majesty. May this time of worship rekindle our love for you and for one another. In your living name we pray, O Lord of love and gracious Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our scripture reading is taken from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 13. I may be able to speak the languages of human beings and even of angels, but if I have no love, my speech is no more than a noisy gong or a clanging bell. 
I may have the gift of inspired preaching. I may have all knowledge and understanding, all secrets. I may have all the faith needed to move mountains. But if I have no love, I am nothing. I may give away everything I have and even give up my body to be burned. But if I have no love, this does me no good. Love is patient and kind. It is not jealous or conceited or proud. Love is not ill-mannered or selfish or irritable. Love does not keep a record of wrongs. Love is not happy with evil, but is happy with the truth. Love never gives up. It is faith, hope, and patience that never fails. Love is eternal. They are inspired messages, but they are temporary. They are gifts of speaking in strange tongues, but they will cease. There is knowledge, but it will pass. For our gifts of knowledge and of inspired messages are only partial. But when what is perfect comes, then what is partial will disappear. When I was a child, my speech, feelings, and thinking were all those of a child. Now that I am an adult, I have no more use of for childish ways. What we see now is like a dim image in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. What I know now is only partial. Then it will be complete, as complete as God's knowledge of me. Meanwhile, these three remain, faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God for his word. When I was a child, waiting for Christmas was exhilarating and Christmas time was really, really exciting. I remember visiting family, being thrilled to get gifts, counting down the moments and the hours to Christmas day and being filled with happiness, a kind of exaltation for Christmas. I remember taking part in Christmas concerts, reciting, what shall I give him poor as I am? If I were a shepherd, I would give a lamb. If I were a wise man, I would do my part. Yet what I can, I give him, give him my heart. And singing once in Royal David City. Somehow, now that I've grown up, Christmas just doesn't seem to be as much fun anymore. Part of it may be because of COVID, but part of it, I think, is because of what it means to grow up. The Apostle Paul talks to us about love, and in the midst of talking to us about love, he reminds us that love involves and includes growing up. It's in some way an unusual passage to hear in the midst of this season. We expect to hear it at weddings, 1 Corinthians 13. But we listen to it today because love is one of the themes for Advent. Love is one of the messages of Christmas. And we listen to it to remind ourselves what makes Christmas Christmas is love. As a child, I think Christmas was so exciting because I was surrounded by people who loved me and I experienced that love in many places I went. Now, well, there's a joke that says, first you believe in Santa Claus and then you are Santa Claus and then you look like Santa Claus. It's not exactly that, but with growing up come more responsibilities. With growing up, the Apostle Paul reminds us, we put away childish things and we get a new perspective. We embody and express love. We have thought a lot about love at Christmas time. We receive love. 
We experience love in Jesus Christ. Love comes down to us. We are reminded in one of our Advent songs, Heal to the Lord's Anointed, we are reminded that the times to come, the tide of time, will never remove the covenant that God has made with us. And the name of God will endure with us forever. Because that name is love. In the Bible, we do not get definitions, but we do get descriptions and identifications. We are told, you know where love is and what love is because love is patient, love is kind. Love is not jealous or conceited or proud, not ill-mannered or selfish or irritable. Love endures, perseveres. The faith and the hope and the patience of love never disappoint. They never fail. Jesus Christ shows us this kind of love. Jesus is patient and kind. Jesus Christ is not jealous or conceited or proud. Jesus is not ill-mannered or selfish or irritable. Jesus does not give up on us. Because when we think about love, when we think about the exhilaration of Christmas past, and when we try to transmit that exhilaration and to communicate that feeling of delight to those who desperately need it, we recognize we are expressing the message and the mystery of Christ. We are trying our best to embody love. This is the maturity. When we grow up, we begin seeing things not selfishly, but instead with empathy, with compassion. Another word that includes all those things is love. Love is a challenge in this world of hatred in this world of intolerance, in this world where even the driving shows us that there is hostility. And if there is hostility on the road, imagine how much hostility there is in the heart and the mind, in the character. Love is one of the many gifts at Christmas that is impossible except by the grace of God. When we journey through the elements of Advent, when we march up to the doorway of Christmas, when we chart the pathway of hope and peace and joy and love, we are not talking about gifts that earth can give us. We are not talking about the way of the world. These are the gifts that can only come from heaven. These are the gifts that are only possible by the grace of God. A great German mystic wrote a song that John Wesley translated. Part of it says, love caused your incarnation. Love brought you down to me. Your thirst for my salvation procured my liberty. Love caused the incarnation. Love is the incarnation. And for you and for me, in these challenging times, where so many are thoughtless, we are called to be thoughtful. Being thoughtless is being selfish. Being selfish means being immature. We are reminded in 1 Corinthians 13 to listen to this description of love. It is a depiction of Jesus Christ. Could it also be a depiction of your life? 
a description of how you are in this cruel world. Are you patient and kind? Are you happy with the truth? Are you someone who endures and perseveres? Whatever gifts you have, whatever gifts you will receive at Christmas time, they will fade. The material gifts will break and one day be forgotten. But love is eternal. We give God thanks for that. And during this Advent and Christmas season and every moment of every day of our lives, let us remember, God is love. And those who live in love, live in God. And God lives in them. Is love a description of who we are? If not, let's try to live up to that description. Because it is a description of our Savior, our Lord, who comes to make us and remake us in His image and likeness. Thanks be to God, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
and the communion and fellowship of the Holy Spirit are with us now and forevermore.